bears are mammals that belong to the family Ursidae. They are covered in thick fur and have long snouts, short tails, and non-retractable claws. Sizes between the different bear species are hugely variable. The largest of the bears is the polar bear, along with the Kodiak bear, which is a subspecies of brown bear. These bears can measure almost 10 feet in length and weigh up to 1,500 pounds. In comparison, the smallest of the bear species is a sun bear, which grows up to 55 inches long and can weigh up to 140 pounds. There are eight species of bears in total. They inhabit wide and varied habitats across the globe, but none is found in Australia. The wrongly named koala bear, unique to Australia, is not a bear at all, but is a marsupial like kangaroos and opossums. In fact, Australia has a unique mammalian fauna that doesn't include any land predators larger than the dingo. And even the dingo was an introduced species brought to Australia thousands of years ago. So why does Australia have such unique and fascinating wildlife? And why doesn't it have any bears? To answer this question, we need to travel back millions of years. Australia was once part of the supercontinent Gondwana. This huge landmass was formed 550 million years ago and included modern-day South America, Africa, India, Antarctica, and Australia. It was one of two landmasses covering the Earth, the other being Laurasia. During the formation of Gondwana, complex life forms began to evolve, but they were primitive. Animals like segmented worms and jellyfish were dominating. But following this, the Cambrian explosion, which resulted from higher atmospheric oxygen levels and more nutrient-rich seas, allowed larger and more complex animals to evolve. These animals could freely move from one place to the next on these large land masses without any oceanic barriers. But as the great supercontinent began to break up, it became increasingly difficult for species to migrate from one landmass to another. Early mammals had evolved in the late Triassic period on Gondwana, but the first bears didn't appear on Earth until much later, and after this great landmass had broken up. Since Australia had already detached from Gondwana and floated off towards its current location, there was no way of bears migrating there. Australia became isolated and separated from other continents by vast oceans which meant animals that evolved and developed on other continents couldn't reach its shores. There is a geographical line called the Wallace Line, which is a zoological boundary between Australia and Southeast Asia. Animals found to the west of the line are of Asian origin, and those to the east are Australian. Very few species have crossed over from Southeast Asia into Australia, despite the relatively short distance across the open seas. Whilst bears never made it into Australia, Australia has developed its own very unique fauna. Found nowhere else on Earth, over 90% of Australia's species are endemic to Australia. This amounts to over 7,000 vertebrate animals and over 20,000 plants. Two of the world's three egg-laying mammals live in Australia. The duck-billed platypus, with its duck-like feet and bill attached to an otter-like body. And the echidna, a hedgehog-looking mammal, as well as these bizarre animals. Most of the world's marsupials are found in Australia. These include Tasmanian devils, kangaroos, koalas, wombats, wallabies, and bandicoots. Australia's unique fauna is largely due to its geographical history, as Gondwana broke apart. For some time, South America, Antarctica, and Australia remained connected. This allowed for the migration of species between the different regions. The connection between these three continents is how marsupials came to be in Australia. Evidence suggests that marsupials originated and evolved in South America. Those that remained in Australia as it broke away from Antarctica and South America then evolved in isolation from the rest of the world. So, why aren't there weird and wonderful animals like marsupials in South America? The answer is that there used to be. Opossums originated in South America and migrated northwards into North America, and other marsupial species that lived in South America became extinct due to competition from other animals. 
the great species interchange between North and South America resulted in a massive loss of unique species from South America, including most marsupials. Australian marsupials evolved into their many different forms, free from large land predators. Although predators were less of a problem in Australia, the climate could be unforgiving. Australia became drier about 15 million years ago, resulting in more uniquely adapted species. Marsupials developed many adaptations to help them survive in the often harsh climatic conditions. Kangaroos can have babies at different developmental stages simultaneously. A baby embryo can be developed whilst a second is growing in the mother's pouch, and she nurses a third on the ground. These incredible animals can also stop their lactation and reproduction when times are tough. Adaptations like these ensure the survival of as many offspring as possible. So, if bears weren't around on Gondwana, then when did they evolve, and where did they migrate to, and from? The evolutionary history of today's bears can be traced back 40 million years. They evolved from a common ancestor that had characteristics of both dogs and bears, but the first recognizable bear-like mammal only evolved 20 million years ago. All living bear species are thought to have descended from the dawn bear, which populated Asia and what was subtropical Europe 20 million years ago. This bear became extinct about 7 million years ago, when Europe became colder and drier, but its descendants lived on. Eurasian bears spread across Europe and Asia, before crossing into North and then South America, diversifying as they did so. Although their dog-like ancestors were quite small, bears have since evolved into the world's largest carnivorous land mammals. We know why bears never occupied Australia, but it is interesting to consider whether they could survive there. While some bear species live in hot climates such as the sun bear and the spectacled bear, most bears overheat very easily. Even polar bears that live in the frozen Arctic and endure temperatures as low as negative 50 degrees Celsius or negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit can overheat if they run over a significant distance. The likes of grizzly bears and black bears take regular dips in rivers and lakes to cool off. Their enormous size and thick fur make them vulnerable to heat exhaustion. When we think of Australia, we often think of the hot climate. There are certainly some locations where the average annual temperatures can regularly exceed 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. In these places, the climate would likely be too hot for some bear species. But with such a vast land mass, Australia offers a range of climates and habitats. Rainfall is variable, and temperatures can be a lot cooler than the scorching deserts of Western Australia. Some regions like Tasmania, Canberra, and Queensland are cooler and receive snow fairly often. There are even several seasonal ski resorts in some locations. Woodlands, forests, and national parks are extensive and could provide the right sort of habitat for many bear species. There is an abundance of wildlife that can be considered prey for bears, as well as plentiful fruits and berries. Of course, introducing an apex predator into a vulnerable ecosystem would wreak havoc on the native wildlife there, because Australia has developed in isolation over millions of years. The flora and fauna are easily disrupted by invasive species. As a result, the Australian government is extremely strict about what comes into the country. Whilst it may be exciting to see a grizzly bear making its home in Australia's outback, it is equally exciting that this country is unique and has its own diverse and wonderful wildlife. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching! See you next time. time.